Drage kolege, sada bih iskoristila priliku da dam svoj kratak osvrt na temu današnjega skupa. Ja ću govoriti na engleskom jeziku. I will make my intervention in English. At the very beginning, I would like to point out that unprecedented global health crisis caused by coronavirus pandemic is accompanied, as we all know, with serious economic and social impacts. Precisely now, more than ever before, all our countries have the increased responsibility and duty to come together and fulfill the CEI priorities. The pandemic is the reason behind the lag in international cooperation, precisely in time when it was needed the most. I believe that protectionism and the closing borders are not an adequate response to the current crisis because this prevents a worldwide distribution of basic goods and punishes economies that rely on global supply chains and leads to increased inequity. The role of international organization and mechanisms is extremely important in times of global challenges to enable financial inclusion and more balanced recovery, to reduce extreme poverty, to alleviate to promote the climate solutions agenda. Example of unequal access to vaccines, production and distribution is an error of the shows the error of protectionism approach and lack of global action. This also entails expanding vaccine production, lifting trade restrictions on vaccine inputs, in and improving the transparency of vaccines order and delivery schedules. The slow and inconsistent distribution of vaccines and the need to maintain the restriction of movement because of the fear of transmissible forms of coronavirus slow the recovery path even more in the first half of this year. But the Eurozone is forecast to recover strongly in the second half of 2021 with vaccination accelerating and pandemic relaxation. Growth is projected on 4.2%, which is 0.6% more than the January forecast, and it will reach 4.4% in 2022 among EU member states. But anxiety and hope are feelings that describe the global economy and humanity as whole when we look to the future. Because recovery isn't guaranteed. There are still remains of possibility of backsliding in terms of economy due to additional COVID-19 waves, further postponement of vaccination, increased level of debt or growing inflation, inflation pressure. Compared to previous year, this year global economic growth recovered owing to strong support of public authorities and somewhat effective vaccination process and re-initiating a numerous economic activities. What is needed to be done to get back on track? They say the best way is to boost the, the boost economy to grow, is to create new jobs, increase private investment, create safe, safety nets for the most vulnerable categories, change policies and distribute vaccines evenly. Governments and leadership are key to economic recovery. Maintaining financial stability, price stability, aggressive liquidity support because it will save the jobs. Well targeted as well support to those companies that will use these resources for new jobs and investments. Attention of debt is another critical task. The pandemic which spurred an unprecedented build-up in government debt in many economies. Investing in low carbon and renewable energy resources and prioritizing climate spending to achieve maximum impact as well. Trade could be a long driver of development and could become a solid engine of growth again, but we need to take measures to lower trade costs, including simplifying border procedures, improving transport infrastructure. Specifically, when it comes to Montenegro as a tourist destination, its economic and financial activities, unlike last year, despite the pandemic circumstances, are reaching an even surpassing results from before the pandemic. Economy, economic recovery in Montenegro is visible. After the biggest drop in economy in modern history of 15%, growth is expected by 10% this year. More than 
20% of GDP as heard before is based on tourism. So 2020 was devastating for our economy. This year, after budget deficit of 11% of GDP, it expected to share this year it will be below 3%. We also registered decrease in public debt levels from 103% of GDP in December 2020 to 88% in July 2021. Montenegro is implementing a series of measures supporting the economy and supporting the citizens. Measures for Corridor 1 refer to support of vulnerable populations groups, wage subsidies in vulnerable one-sectors, new employment, tax and contribution reprograms, support to domestic agricultural producers. Measures for Corridor 2 current year also included the support to vulnerable populations and continuation of support to the economy, same as Corridor 1. First, liquidity support to small and medium enterprises, reservation of jobs to favorable loans. It must be said that Montenegro owes deep gratitude precisely to the European Union for its financial assistance, which was 53 million euros for short-term support, 90 million of direct foreign investment in 2020. So far, investment of circa 1 billion euros since 2007 to favorable loans. European Investment Bank and Investment Balkans Investment Framework Five, uh, one million, but f uh, 500 millions from 2007 through IPA or pre-accession funds. So, thanks to the good decisions, precise allocations of measures, program budget, we can expect growth and development in structural reforms. Thanks to the good which is confirmed in International Monetary Fund forecast of 7% for next year, and our ministers are announcing more courageous moves that lead, that could lead to inclusive growth. Increase of minimum wage on 450 euros, now is 250 euros. Introduction of non-taxable earnings less than 700 euros, so-called Marshall Plan. I believe that recovery period will give policymakers a unique opportunity to start pursuing the path of green, resilient and inclusive development of their countries. To achieve this, climate and development policies must be integrated in governmental policies and incentives aligned to achieve sustainable development goals. Private investment in partnership with the state bodies will, need, will be needed to meet the green investment agenda. An efficient and transparent regulatory environment including appropriate CO2 taxation policy is of paramount importance to tackle climate change. How national governments, the private sector and international organizations will respond to these challenges of poverty, inequality and climate change in Europe and the world as we emerge from the crisis has hit us, all will define the choices of our generation. We need to work hard to meet these challenges and to be able to pursue Green, resilient, this world needs growth for all. Once again, dear colleagues, let me welcome you warmly to Montenegro and wish us all a fruitful discussion, exchange of ideas that will lead to concrete contribution in building resilient economies. Thank you.